the class, Kathy, maybe Travis got out on one of those teams. We won 5-0, and I scored five goals. All right. So game ends, score five goals. I'm feeling pretty good about myself, right? I did what I had to do. We got the win. Feeling great. Everyone's high-fiving me. As I walk off the field, all the parents are kind of on the sideline. Um, at the football stadium. All the parents are patting me on the back, saying, great job, you did fantastic. Five goals, amazing. You know, you crushed it. And I'm kind of like, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm looking. I'm like, oh, I don't see my dad. I'm always at the game, but I don't see him. All right, maybe he's waiting for me up the steps. Walk up the steps. I don't see my dad anywhere. I'm like, what's going on? Sure enough, I'm looking. I see my dad's car. I look, I'm like, oh, he's sitting inside. Maybe he's in a rush. I don't know. I go, I sit in the car. I'm feeling like I'm the man, right? I'm 16 years old, scored five goals, 5-0. sit in the car. My dad refused to talk to me. So I'm just sitting there like, all right, I don't know this is about. He's having a bad day or whatever. All of a sudden, like five minutes into the drive, my dad goes, uh, you know you're the worst player on the field today, right? And I'm just like, come on. You know, I'm like, why is my dad trying to give me, why is he trying to be on my ass? Why is he trying to be, give me a, a hard time? And so me being the smart ass that I was at that age, I'm like, dad, I don't think that's possible. And he's like, no, no, it's, it's possible. You're the worst player on the field. I'm like, well, look, I scored five goals. We won 5-0. If nothing else, the goalkeeper on the other team is worse than I am. Because uh, if I score five goals on him and I suck, then he must really suck. And my dad goes, and, and I'll never forget this, and that's why I'm telling you the story, because it's stuck with me to this day. My dad goes, no, that's where you're absolutely wrong. He's like, because that goalkeeper, as much as he sucked, he was giving it his best. And he was playing to his ability. Right? And he could be on. Because if I made some saves, he goes, but you, you were playing below your below your ceiling. I'm like, I start thinking about it, and I'm like, what's he talking about? I scored five goals. But then I start thinking about it more and more and more, and it was like, it was like my dad dropped this little nugget in my brain that exploded. And that was the biggest thing for me, because I started thinking, you know what? I scored five goals, but I pissed the ball away a bunch of times. I tried to go for Megs when I, someone else was wide open. I didn't track back defensively. I was selfish on a couple plays. I didn't work hard on a couple plays. I took the easy way out on a couple plays. He's right. I didn't work my hardest. When I went home and took a shower or whatever it was, I looked in the mirror. I wasn't thinking, man, I, I gave my team everything I had. I was thinking I did just enough. I did enough to get by. And that day, I learned a lesson, not, not that it helped our, our season in Bird Catholic, but it helped me in life. And the whole point of it is, don't be content with where you're at right now. Because there's a whole another level, and when you get to that level, there's another level, and when you get to that level, there's another level. Not just in soccer, because most of you are not going to be pro soccer players. Just, it's just the truth, right? But you can learn more lessons here on this soccer field that will help you in life, whether it's in college, start a job, whatever it is. You're going to deal with different things that are going to be thrown at you. And how you deal with that is going to determine whether you're going to make 30 grand a year, you're going to make six figures, you're going to be a millionaire. It starts now, though, because this is all habit. And when things get rough, are you going to be the guy that's going to point fingers? Oh, he missed that goal, not me. That was, that was all him. I'm just going to hide in the corner, do my job, and not worry about anyone else. Or are you going to take responsibility? And like I said, I'll never forget that day in the car with my dad because I realized, don't ever sell yourself short. Don't ever play to your opponent's level. Right? Don't ever let your level drop because the game's easy. Because now you have not only you're cheating the game, you're cheating yourself, you're cheating your school, you're cheating your family. I had a coach tell me once when I was younger. He's like, he's like you know what, I hate it when uh, coaches say play for the name on the front of your shirt. You know, play for, play for your team. He's like, it's deeper than that. Play for your last name. And I started thinking, what does that mean, play for your last name? He's like, when you play, I should be able to see what kind of parents you have, what kind of family you have, who are you, what kind of person are you. That's what I should be watching when I watch you play. Are you a leader or are you an asshole? Are you going to be the guy that's 
This guy makes a mistake, and I'm waving my hands. And I think I'm Cristiano. I don't make mistakes. We got this guy. I'm perfect. Who are you? Right? And the beautiful thing about soccer is every second you're on the field, you get to show who you are. You get to express it, whether it's creativity, whether you're a hard-nosed guy, whether you are uh, uh, can run all day, whether you're fast, whatever it is, each of you have a quality. Every single one of you. You have something that you bring to the team. Maybe you're just uh, the connector. Maybe you're the guy that bridges the gap between a senior and a freshman. Every guy has a role, every guy has a gift. Right? But it's up to you how you use that gift. And that's and that's the beauty of it, man. Um, well, I asked them, what are they going to do special today to help their team? That's the kind of thing that we're trying to get as well. And then at halftime, you know, when the chips are down, we're going to talk about things that we're going to do to build the team. How are we going to win this game as a group? Not the negativity side. Forget all the mistakes we made in the first half. But on the freshman, the JV, and the varsity, everybody should be thinking together. You know, like we're saying, it's the kind of philosophy that we're living by. That we started to live by this year. Is that as a group, what can we do together 